last month at Interior. Secretary Holland this week applauded President Biden's expansion of the Berryessa Snow Mountain National Monument in Northern California's Inner Coast Range by nearly 14,000 acres. The new designation protects a striking 11-mile-long north-south ridgeline that is sacred to the Patwin people. The presidential proclamation also permanently renames the ridgeline Malak Liok, which means Condor Ridge in the language of the Patwin people. The expansion of the monument advances the Biden-Harris administration's work to support community-driven and tribally-led initiatives to conserve and restore our nation's lands and waters through the America the Beautiful initiative. Secretary Holland, Assistant Secretary for Indian Affairs Brian Newland, and Bureau of Reclamation Commissioner Camille Kalimlin Tutin joined tribal, federal, and state leaders at the Colorado River Indian Tribes Community in Arizona to commemorate an historic water rights agreement. The agreement gives the tribes the ability to lease, exchange, or store a portion of their river water entitlement for the first time ever. The visit underscored Interior's commitment to strengthening Indian country with significant resources through President Biden's Investing in America agenda, which provides more than $13 billion directly to tribes across the country. Secretary Holland concluded the department's coast-to-coast -coast celebration of National Park Week with a visit to Delaware's first state National Historical Park. She joined park staff, local, state, and federal leaders for the grand opening of the park's new Welcome Center. Designated in 2015, First State is Delaware's only national park. It preserves, protects, and interprets the role of Delaware in the birth of the United States. Assistant Secretary for Fish and Wildlife and Parks Shannon Estenos wrapped up a week-long tour of national parks throughout Florida, Georgia, and South Carolina, where she highlighted how investments from President Biden's Investing in America agenda are bolstering nature-based infrastructure to protect communities and habitats. At Biscayne National Park and the Moat Marine Lab at Key Largo, transformational investments through the Inflation Reduction Act and bipartisan infrastructure law are restoring corals along the coast. And in South Carolina, the Assistant Secretary toured a number of sites, including Reconstruction-era National Historical Park, which honors the significance of this era. Interior this week announced the availability of $71 million in funding through the President's Investing in America agenda to help tribal communities electrify their homes. It's the second round of funding from the Office of Indian Affairs Tribal Electrification Program, part of an overall $150 million investment from the Inflation Reduction Act, the largest ever investment in climate, to support the electrification of homes in tribal communities. The U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service this week announced the selection of four projects that will address early detection and rapid response for aquatic invasive species. Deputy Assistant Secretary for Fish and Wildlife and Parks Matthew Strickler visited the San Diego National Wildlife Refuge Complex to announce the projects, which are funded through the service's Ecosystem Restoration Program. That program is receiving $4 million over four years through the bipartisan infrastructure law to establish a pilot rapid response fund for aquatic invasive species. And our social media picture of the week, things that make you go aw. From Yellowstone National Park, we get this adorable image of a mama swallow returning to her nest just in time to feed her three hungry babies who aren't shy about letting mom know it's time for lunch. Make sure you follow us on Facebook. Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. That's This Week at Interior. Last month at Interior. Secretary Holland and department leaders joined Biden-Harris administration officials, prominent historians, museum leaders, conservation leaders, and others this week to honor the legacy and contributions of women and girls to our history. The event highlighted President Biden's recent executive order to strengthen the National Park Service's recognition of women's history to help honor the legacy and contributions of women and girls to our country. The secretary announced a new women's history virtual exhibition from the service called Home and Homeland which explores how women have made, claimed, and fought for their homes and shaped American history throughout the Pacific West.
Secretary Holland traveled to New Mexico this week to announce a $60 million investment from President Biden's Investing in America agenda for water conservation and drought resilience in the Rio Grande Basin. As part of the Biden-Harris administration's all-of-government approach to building drought resilience in the West. Stretching over 1,200 miles, the Rio Grande provides water for agriculture and nearby communities, supports eight tribal nations, habitat for migrating birds and other species, and a robust outdoor recreation industry. Interior this week announced a $147 million investment from the President's Investing in America agenda to help Western communities in 10 states prepare and respond to challenges due to drought and other water scarcity concerns. Bureau of Reclamation Commissioner Camille Kalimlin Tootin made the announcement during a visit with the Southern Ute Tribe in southwestern Colorado. The tribe is being awarded a $2.3 million grant to upgrade their water system to provide reliable water levels during various water flow periods. Interior this week announced that more than $87 million in funding has been approved by the Migratory Bird Conservation Commission. That will provide the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service and its partners the ability to help conserve or restore more than 300,000 acres of wetland and associated upland habitat for waterfowl, shorebirds, and other birds across North America. The commission also approved more than $2.7 million from the Migratory Bird Conservation Fund to help conserve habitat on two national wildlife refuges across two states. With the addition last month of the Tule River Indian Tribe in California, the National Park Service has now signed 10 new tribal historic preservation agreements in five states over the last year. The program assists Native American tribes in strengthening their historic preservation efforts, transferring certain preservation responsibilities to tribes that would otherwise be the responsibility of the state. Assistant Secretary for Insular and International Affairs Carmen Cantor this week announced nearly $2.5 million in technical assistance program funding for the U.S. Virgin Islands through Interior's Office of Insular Affairs. The funds will be used to purchase needed medical equipment, to train youth for employment, and to train utility employees in energy grid management and integration across power sources. It's the largest ongoing freshwater fishery restoration effort in the world, and it's underway once again on the Great Lakes. Through the end of May, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, along with tribal and state partners, is performing its annual restocking effort, transporting nearly 3 million lake trout to Lake Michigan and Lake Huron after rearing them in fish hatcheries. Once devastated by overharvest and invasive species, lake trout are now restored in Lake Superior and are showing much more successful reproduction in the other Great Lakes since efforts began in the 1990s. Deputy Assistant Secretary for Water and Science Annalise Bloom joined U.S. Geological Survey Director David Applegate in celebrating Amphibian Week on the National Mall this week, along with personnel from the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, National Park Service, the Departments of Defense and Agriculture, the U.S. Forest Service, and the Smithsonian Institution. The event highlighted the importance of amphibians and showcased how Interior's agencies are helping to understand and conserve these fascinating animals. Secretary Holland, Acting Deputy Secretary Laura Daniel Davis, and department leaders this week saluted the recipients of the 2024 Interior Honor Awards Convocation, the most prestigious recognition that can be granted by the department for career accomplishments, exceptional support of the department's mission, or for heroism. I hope each of you leave here today with a renewed sense of purpose and accomplishment. This team is beyond a doubt essential, and I'm so grateful to be in this historic work alongside you. All of you inspire me to do the best job I can as secretary, and you are shining examples of what it means to serve our country. For a complete list of this year's winners, check out doi.gov slash convocation 77. And our social media picture of the week, this breathtaking image of Lemhi Pass on the Idaho-Montana border as we mark National Wildflower Week. Here in the steps of Lewis and Clark, it's the perfect time to pause and marvel at a spectacular vista, made even more stunning by the glorious hues of yellow and violet under the big bright blue sky. Make sure you follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. That's This Week at Interior. Last month at Interior. 
Secretary Holland wrapped up a multi-day visit to Southern California, where she met with federal, state, tribal, and local officials and community members to learn about their vision for the proposed establishment of Chuckwalla National Monument and expansion of Joshua Tree National Park. The proposed monument encompasses more than 600,000 acres of existing Bureau of Land Management public lands within Imperial and Riverside counties in Southern California. It would also add as much as 17,000 acres to the existing Joshua Tree National Park. This week provided several opportunities to highlight how resources from President Biden's Investing in America agenda are being used to reclaim and restore orphaned oil and gas wells, which pose serious health and safety threats by contaminating surface and groundwater, releasing toxic air pollutants, and leaking methane. During a stop in Los Angeles, Secretary Holland announced an additional $35.2 million investment for California. The state expects to plug and remediate 206 high-risk wells that threaten communities and decommission 47 attendant production facilities with approximately 70,000 feet of associated pipelines. And in New Mexico this week, Acting Deputy Secretary Laura Daniel Davis announced $25 million from the President's Investing in America agenda for the state to clean up legacy pollution. New Mexico expects to plug approximately 117 orphaned oil and gas wells, remediate four sites, and complete surface restoration of 33 locations with the grant funding. The investments will help create good-paying union jobs, bolster economic growth and revitalization, and reduce environmental and public health impacts from from harmful methane leaks. While in New Mexico, the Acting Deputy Secretary also announced more than $520 million from the Investing in America agenda to revitalize aging water delivery systems across the West. The funding will support 57 projects across all six regions served by the Bureau of Reclamation to improve water conveyance and storage, increase safety, improve hydropower generation, and provide water treatment. Assistant Secretary for Fish and Wildlife and Parks Shannon Estenos traveled to Massachusetts and Rhode Island this week, where she highlighted how investments from the Investing in America agenda and America the Beautiful Initiative are helping restore ecosystems for the benefit of both people and wildlife. In Bridgewater, Massachusetts, she joined local and state leaders to celebrate the completion of the High Street Dam Removal Project to restore the river and support aquatic connectivity. In Narragansett, Rhode Island, the Assistant Secretary toured a new project funded by a $1 million investment from the America the Beautiful Challenge that will recover natural salt marsh hydrology degraded by legacy impacts and invasive species. Interior this week announced $81 million from the Investing in America agenda for water conservation and drought resilience in California's San Joaquin Valley. Acting Deputy Secretary Laura Daniel Davis, Acting Principal Deputy Assistant Secretary for Water and Science Sarah Krikoff, and Bureau of Reclamation Commissioner Camille kalimlin tutin joined federal and state leaders and Central Valley Project Water Agencies at Interior to announce the funding and sign a Memorandum of Understanding outlining a new long-term drought plan for the region. The Office of Surface Mining, Reclamation and Enforcement this week announced more than $14 million from the Investing in America agenda to address dangerous and polluting abandoned mine lands in Tennessee and Utah. The funding addresses legacy pollution in those states while advancing economic opportunity in coal communities. The U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service and its student and community partners recently celebrated a milestone in Colorado. Every year for the last four years, students from Palisade High School's endangered fish hatchery have released hundreds of razorback suckers into the fish's native habitat, the Colorado River. Earlier this month, they released the program's 1,000th fish. Wildlife conservationist and Emmy Award-winning TV host Jeff Corwin was on hand to help celebrate the occasion and salute the students who helped make it happen. The National Park Service has officially reopened Bridge 23 to cyclists and pedestrians along Virginia's Mount Vernon Trail after a year of reconstruction partially funded by the bipartisan infrastructure law. The 18-mile trail stretches from George Washington's Mount Vernon estate to Theodore Roosevelt Island and is enjoyed by millions of visitors every year. And our social media picture of the week, the hidden jewel of the Great Plains, Oklahoma's Wichita Mountains Wildlife Refuge. Best known for its roaming herds of bison and Rocky Mountain elk, Wichita Mountains provides grassland and granite mountain homes for an abundance of wildlife and quality opportunities for fishing, bird watching, wildlife photography, hiking, and kayaking. Make sure you follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. That's This Week at Interior. Last month at Interior.
Secretary Holland this week led the U.S. delegation to the fourth international conference on small island developing states in St. John's, Antigua, and Barbuda. The visit underscored the United States' partnership with small island developing states and commitment to advancing their sustainable development for a resilient and prosperous future in the face of challenges like the climate-related impacts of sea level rise and extreme weather events. Interior this week announced more than $30 million from President Biden's Investing in America agenda for Arkansas and Louisiana to clean up legacy pollution. Louisiana will use its $25 million award to plug and reclaim 540 orphaned oil and gas wells. Arkansas is receiving a more than $5.5 million award to plug and reclaim approximately 274 orphaned well sites. The investments will help create good-paying union jobs, catalyze economic growth and revitalization, help protect public health and the environment from harmful methane leaks, and advance environmental justice. Interior this week announced a $242 million investment through the Bureau of Reclamation from the President's Investing in America agenda that will bring clean, reliable drinking water to communities across the West through five water storage and conveyance projects. The projects in California, Colorado, and Washington are expected to add at least 1.6 million acre-feet of additional water storage capacity, enough water to support 6.4 million people for a year. Interior also announced a $179 million investment through the Investing in America agenda for innovative water reuse projects that strengthen drought resilience across the West, increasing water security and resilience across Western communities. Funding from the Bipartisan Infrastructure Law through the Bureau of Reclamation will support four projects in California and Utah to help communities create new sources of water to support water reliability. The Bureau of Ocean Energy Management this week advanced two wind energy projects offshore New Jersey that, if approved, could generate about 2,800 megawatts of electricity, enough to power almost 1 million homes. BOEM also moved ahead with an offshore wind research lease in the Gulf of Maine to research floating offshore wind energy technology and its deployment. Since the start of the Biden-Harris administration, Interior has approved the nation's first eight commercial-scale offshore wind energy projects, enough to power 4 million homes. As West Virginia's Canaan Valley National Wildlife Refuge gets ready to mark its 30th birthday this summer, it's already celebrating a 19-acre expansion. Thanks to the Nature Conservancy and Land and Water Conservation Fund, the refuge has acquired the Big Cove area, increasing public access to hunting, fishing, and recreation, and helping to secure the area's clean water supply through increased protection of the largest intact wetlands complex in the state. And our social media picture of the week, if it's not one thing, it's an otter. One of nature's most social and playful creatures, river otters have big personalities and even bigger appetites. Often seen in groups called romps, they can be observed frolicking and hunting year-round at Grand Teton National Park. Make sure you follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. That's This Week at Interior.